What I've got here is a spring. Uh, I just bought it at the hardware store. This is a spring that you might use to attach to a, a screen door to keep it closed. Um, and, of course, it stretches. So when I pull on the spring, it stretches, and I can feel that if I want to stretch it further, I have to pull harder. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform a little experiment to uh, examine the relationship between how hard I have to pull and how does that relate to how far the string, excuse me, how far the spring stretches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang some weights on the spring. And with this meter stick, I'm going to measure by looking at where the spring goes to how far the spring has stretched. So right now, I've set my meter stick at, uh, so that the end of the spring is at the zero mark, and I'm going to add 500 grams of mass at a time. So I'll add 500 grams, and I'll see, I'll put my eye level right here and see how far the uh, spring has stretched, and then I'll continue to add 500 grams at a time, and I'll look and see how far it's stretched, and I'll keep doing that up to about, up to about 2,500 grams, and I'm going to enter my data in a table, and the table will have the amount of weight that's pulling down on the spring, and how far the spring is stretched, and I'm going to make a graph to uh, examine the relationship between the force pulling on the spring and the amount of stretch. So I've performed the experiment 500, uh, adding 500 grams at a time up to a total amount of 2,500 grams and the spring stretched each time and I measured the level on the meter stick and here we see our results. So in this left column is the amount of mass stretching the spring. I've converted that to weight in newtons and I've measured in meters uh, the stretch of the, of the spring. So 0 0.07, 7 centimeters or 0 0.07 meters for 500 grams all the way up to a stretch of 36 centimeters or 0.36 meters for 2.5 kilograms or 24.5 newtons of weight. Then I made a graph of the stretching force on the y-axis versus the amount of stretch on the x-axis and we see the relationship is a linear relationship. For the amount of stretch, uh, as the stretch increases, the force increases, and it happens so linearly. So here's the linear relationship of the force of this, on the spring versus the amount of stretch. And this is a straight line, uh, and I've asked Excel to calculate the slope of the line for me, and I see here that the slope is 68. So if I use my equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus b, of course if I have no uh, force pulling on the spring, the stretch of the spring is zero. So that means the y-intercept is zero. So that's not there. And on the y-axis, I have force. On the x-axis, I have stretch, which we'll label with the variable x to indicate some uh, stretch in the x-direction. And a straight line, of course, means that the force is proportional to the stretch, which means uh, we have a constant of proportionality uh, to, rela to relate the two. We'll call that k for the constant of proportionality of the relationship between force and stretch, and we see we come up with this equation, F equals KX, where X is the amount of stretch of the spring, K is the constant of proportionality uh, between the two, and F is the force. Units of newtons for force, units of meters for stretch, which if I solve the equation for K, I see I have units then of newtons for force, over meters for stretch, so my units for my what is called the spring constant 
is units of newtons per meter and for this particular spring I got a spring constant of 68 newtons per meter which means if I hung 68 newtons of weight on that spring it would stretch to a length or to a stretch amount of one meter. So this leads us to Hooke's law that says the force that stretches a spring is proportional to the amount that the spring is stretched and we showed that that relationship is a linear relationship. So if I let this be my zero point where the spring is unstretched, I put a weight on it and it stretched some amount x and the weight of that mass is the force that stretched the spring. Hooke's law looks at the force of the spring now. I know that when this is sitting still, it's in equilibrium, so I know that the weight pulling down is the same amount of force as the spring pulling upwards. I know that because it's at static equilibrium. So if I look at the force from the spring, and if I include direction with this, uh, I'll choose the downward direction to be positive for this example. That means the displacement, x, was in the positive direction. But the force from the spring is pulling up on the weight. So the force from the spring is in the negative direction. The displacement and the force are in opposite directions. So to make the equation complete, we put a negative sign here, which indicates that whichever way the spring is displaced, the force of the spring is opposite of that. Of course, if I have a spring that compresses, the spring in our experiment did not compress, but if this is a spring that could compress, Right, if I pushed up on that with my hand so that it went up, then the displacement would be in the negative direction. But since I compress the spring, it pushes back in the opposite direction and it will be a negative of a negative and the force will be in the positive direction. So all this minus sign means is that the force of the spring is opposite to the, either the stretch or compression.